Okay, let's talk about the MEGA Paraprofessional Assessment. So if you're watching this particular video, I assume that you are studying to become a paraprofessional in the great state of Missouri. So congratulations on that. And uh, on the paraprofessional assessment um, will be a considerable amount of math. So you definitely want to be ready for the math that will be on there. And uh, what I got here is a quick little practice problem, but it's certainly not all inclusive um, in terms of the math that you need to know. But before we get going, um, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm a middle and high school math teacher, and my online math programs have helped uh, many, many people through the years um, all over the world, but mostly in the United States and online uh, courses. I've done a tremendous amount of different types. I actually um, have an MEGA paraprofessional math test prep course. So if you like my teaching style and you want to really, you know, kind of see my best work for this particular assessment, I'm going to leave a link to that course in the description of this video. But with that being said, I got a little kind of pop quiz here for you. Something you're definitely going to um, have to be able to handle these type of particular problems. Um, again, this is only one little small kind of uh, math skill that you're going to need to know. And of course, we're going to be uh, talking about percent here. So we're going to, um, I'm going to give you a chance to solve this problem, then I'm going to solve it, and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up. So um, let's go ahead and see what the problem is. So I want you, well, let me just read it to you. So 14, 14 is 3% of what number? So 14 is 3% of what number? So if you think you know how to do this, or can do this, Go ahead and pause the video, see if you can get your answer, and then try to justify your answer too. Like, don't, you know, I know a lot of you are out there like, oh, I know either I divide or I multiply or do this or that. And you you might have like three different options, right? Just think if this was a test, you know, a multiple choice, like could you confidently get the answer and then be like, okay, yeah, that's option A or B, C or whatever the case might be, right? So it's not although you, you're going to create some numbers as possible answers I want you to think to yourself how, how confident are you in your answer okay and how to uh, in your result alright so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into a quick quick uh, crash course on percent right uh, just to kind of make this a little bit of a uh, bonus for this video so let's just talk about I'm gonna change this problem I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, solve this of course but let's talk about a more basic problem if I said What's 3% of um, 72, all right? Let's talk about an easier type of percent problem. Well, 3% of 72 is what we do, if you recall, we take the percent and we turn it into a decimal, right? So we take the percent and we turn it into decimal. So most of you might out there be like, oh, that's 0 0.03, all right? So let's just cover how we do that. So 3% is the same thing as 3.0%. So I, the only reason I wrote the 3.0 so we can identify where the decimal point's at. So what we do with the decimal point is we scoot it over two places to the left. One, two, and I get 0 0.03. So 0 0.03 is the same as 3%. So this is percent form, and this is the same value in decimal form okay so we're talking about the same thing here so three percent I write this way or if I want to write that or express that as a uh, decimal it's 0 0.03 now this is gonna be like a real mini lesson on percent there's other ways we can think about it we, basically we're divided by a hundred etc etc but this is just a quick quick review on what we do okay so so uh, get back to this problem. So we have 3% of 72. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that percent to a decimal. So again, that's 0 0.03. And then I just simply multiply by that number. So let me get my little calculator, 0 0.03 um, times uh, 72. I'll do this along with you. 0 .0, uh, 0 0.03 times 72 is uh, 2.16. So 2.16 is 3% of 72. So hopefully are like, oh yeah, I know how to do that. These are real easy type problems. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you do when you're shopping, right? Like, hey, get 60% off or 23% uh, off your next, you know, heating uh, or cooling bill, whatever the case is, right? So we're always we primarily do these real basic percent time uh, problems. So 
Um, the big thing here is how do we take a percent and turn it to a decimal? All right, just a quick crash course on this. Again, there's more you're going to need to know about percent. Um, so this is kind of, that was kind of like one flavor of percent type of problem. But there's another type of percent problem that's very common, and it's this. But now this particular type of problem, I'm going to use a little bit of algebra to uh, show you how to solve this. Okay, because this is when you use a basic algebra to solve percent problems, they really make it so much easier. So let's just think about it. Three percent of what number is 14? Three percent of what number is 14? Well, really, if you think about it, I want to go, th okay, three percent, I know that is 0.03, right? So 0.03 of what number? Remember, what number in algebra? That's just x. It's some variable. So 0.03 times some number, I don't know what it is, but in algebra, it's 0.03 times some number, let's just call it x, all right, is, is, that word is always means equal in math, is equal to 14. So I want you to look at this equation and compare it to this little problem. 14 is 3% of what number? So 3% of what number? Remember 0.03 times whatever that number is it's a mystery number right so 0.03 I know I know if I knew what that number was I would just go oh okay 0 0.03 times that number and my answer is going to be 14 so take a look at this this um, construction and see if you can kind of like get your brain wrapped around what you're seeing here because this is going to be important for you to understand uh, as a paraprofessional okay if you're assisting in kind of basic math because constructing basic equations um, is a real direct way to solve a uh, certain type of percent problems they actually make it much easier okay so if you understand this you're like oh okay I get this now by the way before I go any further if you got this problem correct and you did it in your own way confidently then stick with that way okay but you still need to know or understand how to take a statement and construct a, an, a, an equation out of it okay so but again let me just uh, have a little quick disclosure here if you're able to do this confidently in the way that you were taught then that's great okay so stick with that primary way but this is just kind of more for educational purposes all right so let's uh, continue on so I have this basic equation 0.03 times x equals 14. So let me give you an easier equation. If I had 3 times x, or so 3x equals 14, how would I solve for x? Well, hopefully, this is something you're absolutely going to need to know for the paraprofessional exam here. You're going to have to divide both sides by 3. So x would be equal to 14 divided by 3. So in this case, to solve for x, all I do is divide both sides of this equation by 0 0.03. Okay, so we're going to our handy calculator and let me get mine out we're gonna take 14 and we're gonna divide it by 0 0.03 let me go ahead and do that now 14 divided by 0 0.03 is approximately uh, 4 466 well, this is called 0 0.6 there's a bunch of other decimals it goes on 6666 six, 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 we could just kinda just kinda round up 0.67 but let's just this is a pretty close approximation Okay, so that's our answer. Now, if we wanted to test our answer, we'd say, okay, 3% of what number is 14? Well, all right, is 0 0.03 or 3% of 466.6. What is that in our calculator? So when we see 0 0.03 times 466.6, it equals approximately 13.998. It's not going to be precise because this has much more decimals here, but you can see that's pretty close to 14. So that is our approximate answer. Okay. Well, if you got that right, then that's excellent. Okay. If you were like, okay, uh, you know, I don't know how to do that. If you struggle with it, definitely don't worry so much. Uh, you definitely need to learn this, but a lot of people think they know percent better than they actually do. Um, again, it's just one of these things that you need to cover for the math section uh, for the paraprofessional assessment. Now, I want to kind of leave you with some thoughts here. First of all, this word paraprofessional, I, I'm just not crazy about it. I know that's what they're called, you know, uh, uh, but you're, you know, the real, the para part almost kind of, say, it's almost like kind of semi-professional. Nothing can be further from the truth. Believe me, as a teacher, myself, uh, classroom teacher, teaching for many years, 
you know, people who are in a classroom helping out are, are tremendous, you know, um, assets to the educational system. You are a professional, and that's why you need to go through, just like a teacher does, and takes assessment or certification exams. Don't underestimate them, okay? Uh, really study uh, hard because these, you know, assessments are, are there to really, you know, kind of make sure that the people are going to be involved in educating uh, students, you know, have solid basic skills, of which math is one. It's probably the one that gives the uh, most people the most difficulty. Um, but again, you know, the purpose of this video was to kind of encourage you, one, and two, give you some advice on um, how to prepare. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, so if you like my teaching style, I'm going to give you two things here. Uh, of course, I'm going to leave the link to my full MEGA uh, paraprofessional math test prep course in the description of this video. I've been on YouTube for 12 plus years. Um, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel in various playlists that will definitely help you out with this assessment. So hopefully you'll subscribe and check that out. I'm posting all the time, by the way. Hey, if you like this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Uh, what's kind of drawing you in to become a paraprofessional? Um, you know, uh, are you thinking that one day you'd like to become a teacher? You know, um, I know a lot of paraprofessionals that have uh, later become teachers. I think that's something that's, I think it's a good approach, honestly, uh, because it's a gigantic commitment to become a teacher. I mean, with all the education and, and exams, it's, you know, you, the degrees and everything else. But I guess if you had an opportunity to become a paraprofessional, and become involved in education, get experience working with students, seeing that, and then really kind of honing in on what you like. I think that's a good approach as well. So let me know what your uh, kind of career aspirations are, or, or maybe, you know, anything, any kind of feedback would be good. Are you are you struggling on a paraprofessional assessment? Are you trying it more than once? I will say this much too. If you're taking this assessment more because you failed it once or twice, don't, don't let that bringing you down okay there's plenty of teachers that have to take assessment or certification exams more than once it's not uncommon okay there's particular assessments out there I know the one that I think I had to take for um, high school level mathematics like you know 40 50 percent of the people failed it the first time out so don't get discouraged the thing is they'll get organized and really you know get committed to a, a solid study plan and you'll definitely make it but with that being said I definitely wish you all the best in your educational career whatever that might look like and um, hope this little video helped you out thank you for your time and have a great day